Good morning, everybody. Robert here from the Red Dragon School of Martial Arts. Today, we'll be talking about Tai Chi, and in particular, we're going to talk about the movement Ward Off Left. So when we think about Tai Chi, and we think about the things we try to accomplish while using Tai Chi as a form of exercise and development, there's always two qualities that we strive to embody. And those two qualities primarily are being stable. We want to make sure that we're comfortable and stable throughout the practice. And we also want to be connected. We're thinking about working with energy. So in summary, we would like to connect our body together like a circuit so that we can connect the flows of motion together. So let's begin by preparing our bodies a little bit. So we begin by putting your feet shoulders width apart. And in this case, we're going to release our bodies. And when we think about the qualities of staying stable and connected, the way that we do that is through two basic behaviors. One is to release. In other words, to let all that tension out of the body. Don't hold yourself up in the air. Sort of release yourself down into your footwork. And then gently, we're going to lengthen the body. And we start by lifting the head. The chin is in a little bit. The mouth is closed, the eyes are nice and bright, our spirit is raised to a happy-like level. And happiness, of course, increases the charge within us as well. From here, the shoulders, elbows, wrists, and fingers are settled and gently extended. The waist is lowered down, and we want to feel that energy inside. You can kind of bounce it off of your feet. So as we move through these actions, we're trying to maintain a certain amount of internal awareness. We're trying to become aware of our body's inner energy. So to do that, let's look inside while we hold this basic shape. Now, the chest is relaxed, the tail is down. So in summary, we want a nice big arch. The head is up and try to reach inside and feel your body, especially the Dantian, this region here, pressing down on your feet. The top is kind of emptied into the bottom. Now let's work our breathing a little bit. Take a nice deep breath and follow the breath inward. Way down, let that tummy charge up a little bit and then breathe deeply. And after several breaths, you begin to feel that the breath connects with your energy, right? As you breathe in, you feel a surge. And this is a basic training tool that you can use at any time. And I highly encourage you to utilize this as much as you can. I recommend you set up a timer and actually watch three full minutes go by. You'll find that after a while, you'll stay longer because you'll kind of forget about the time and you'll sort of enjoy that feeling of the inner space and being present and alert in this moment, this movement right now and in this moment, right? So we're trying to let our bodies, our bodies relax a little bit. We don't want too much thinking, right? So that's one I would highly recommend that you invest in. So that's how we turn on the body and connect the body together. Now, in order to contribute to our stability, we like to practice empty full. And in this case, what we mean is the capacity to have all your weight on one side while the other side is free to move. Oftentimes, what we like to recommend is to have something like a chair next to you. Because oftentimes, when we put our weight over one foot and lift up the other leg, whether it's for striding or for kicking or whatever the reason is, we tend to hold ourselves, we grip ourselves, and we sustain ourselves. And that's the opposite of our ability to stay stable. Remember, we're trying to release. So that means if I can let all the weight go down into my foot and stay that attention, the other side of the body will be nice and free. So let's try it. Let's turn our body 45 degrees to the right. Keep your center line turned in the direction of your right foot. With all the weight on your right foot, take your left toe and point it back to the center line. Now feel all the weight in that right foot very carefully. Now here, like Wu Qi, we're going to extend a roundness in the hand, a little bit of charge in the hand, middle way, not too extreme, 
Here we're just going to release that energy and feel that charge pervade our body. Now, it's not required for you to lift your foot. You can just sit on one side. But if you want to add a little bit more work value to it and practice relaxing, then hold on to a chair, push down on your foot, and slowly raise your knee. And in doing so, release into your root. Make sure everything is settled. On the other side, the same thing. We're going to turn the left toe out to the corner. Let's bring the right foot to the center line. Check that you're released and you're nice and comfortable in the posture. Very carefully feel your foot. That's one way to kind of draw all the energy down where you need it. You need to be able to support yourself, but you also want that early observation to allow your foot to make whatever adjustments are there. And by observing it, you give it that opportunity to do that. So again, pushing down and out a little bit. Make sure your chest is relaxed. Lower your tail. Feel that left foot and empty your right. Imagine writing with your right foot. Do you have the freedom to move this foot? And that's what you want to do. Now again, you could just stay here. Now, when you think about practicing empty full throughout the day, for example, it's a matter of being aware of where your weight is. So even if you're on the foam, you can be very light on one side of the body, being conscious of yourself while you're doing whatever you do. And again, I recommend holding on to something so you take the idea of holding your balance away from it and simply feel your body. So draw your attention to that left foot. Slowly raise up and release. Try to tuck the toe tight, knee up high. Again, I recommend holding it longer. You can do this as much as you want, but at least 30 seconds to a minute on each side, you're trying to give yourself the opportunity to, to work on this and, and to get it, if you will. And given the opportunity done enough times, you'll see it'll become very, very natural for you to be stable all the time. All right. Now, before we get into the movement at hand, ward off left, let's review a little bit the previous action uh, and see that we can connect that motion into ward off left. So from here, the opening. The body is stretched up. The chest is relaxed. The waist is down low a little bit of a roundness in the body. And this is a little like shaking out a rug in slow motion. The first action we do is to press down. By pushing on the floor, we're gonna, knees are slightly bent and springy, we're gonna round our palms, push on the floor, and drive your arms to shoulder height. The inner body moves first. Inner body pulls back down to the feet, then the elbow, wrists, and fingers settle, and the weight settles back down. So from here again, my waist is settled, my knees are gently unlocked, and I'm releasing the springiness back down. Don't hold your body. When you feel like you're containing yourself, that's harder to manage. If you can somehow let go and let the forces of gravity pull all the tension out of your body, you find you're a lot less resist resistive and a lot more stable. Let's try that again. So what we want to do is we want to feel the motion. It's not about imitating the action. It's more about feeling that drive and use that drive to push on your arms rather than raise your arms separately, right? So let's try it in a connected way. So sink down, knees unlocked, waist is settled, a deep breath to draw your attention inward. I like to say breathe into your feet to, to draw your attention there. So nice deep breath all the way down. Rotate your palms, push on the floor, push. And a smooth wave inside first. So everything that we do, the common denominator is that we use the inner energy, the inner body, to drive the outer body. So in some words, feeling inside, pushing firmly, and connecting that drive into your action. One more time. From here, coil down into your feet with a settled, springy body. Rotate the palms, push. And there is the opening. Now, for basic training purposes, I highly encourage you to practice that hundreds of times. 
it's not about imitating the action. It's about trying to create that inner reaction, right? And you're electrical. So in summary, the more you stroke your nervous system and the more you stroke your body, you're going to excite that energy internally. It's going to become a lot more obvious for you to, to enjoy and feel. And as a side effect, you're going to balance that internally. So your drive actually is designed to open up any possible interferences. All right, so that's the opening. Now, let's take a look at ward off left. When we think about going through this learning experience of Tai Chi, it's not only about the structures and the exercise value, but there's a very profound learning experience as well. One of the things we're trying to understand is energy. So to do so, energies are identified and recognized in their qualities. And in doing so, we can recognize warding, rollback, press, and push as separate forces. So understanding that helps you to recognize when you're feeling that force as well as applying that force, and it gives you a means of reacting and allowing yourself to be part of that force and staying stable while you're doing so. So ward off left. Now, what are we imagining? From a martial standpoint, what we're imagining, somebody's throwing a punch at us. So we don't want to try to block the punch because the theory itself suggests that we use softness to overcome hardness. So we don't want to interfere with emotion. We want to try to guide that motion over our arms and use our form as a method of trapping and holding a person's forearm. So I'm going to be imagining pushing down on their wrist while lifting up on their forearm. So allow me to demonstrate ward off left. At the end of the opening, as the hands begin to hit baseline, looks like this. Ward off left. Now, when we take a look, closer look at the action, we can see that we're going to stride into a bow stance. Bow stance, left foot forward. And we know the qualities of the bow stance are shoulders width. So we begin the posture at the end of the opening with feet shoulders width. Now, we know that always, 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 we position the rear foot 45 degrees away from the direction. So in doing so, what we're going to do is position the right foot open to the corner. We simply move to the left slightly. Pivoting on the heel, we're going to turn the whole frame, not just the foot. That would be separate. Instead, I'm going to use my waist to operate the motion, and now my whole frame is now 45 degrees. I need to stride with the left. I can't do it with a weight on there. So what I'm going to do in practicing the theory of emptiness and fullness, I move all the weight over to the right side of the body. That enables me to very carefully lift this foot. Maintain the width of my frame, touch the heel first with the weight still back, flatten the foot with the weight still back. Now I can push back and shift the weight forward. So we don't want to try to shift while settling your root because you don't really have the capacity to secure the movement yet. You can't really push down on the floor. So taking a look at it from a side view, what I want to illustrate to you is that I'm keeping my weight back while I put my root in place. So in summary, what that means is right foot to the corner, the heel goes forward, the foot is flat. I can push and pull on that movement. Now I can shift the weight with control. So here's what we're not doing. We're not doing this. Okay, the weight is forward and the foot is back. I can't actually push back and provide a supporting force for the action. In, case, in that case, I can actually be pulled, can I? So in summer, I want to make sure that my feet are in place before I try to apply force. All right, hand techniques. Everything in Tai Chi, everything in the universe, is some form of a circle in motion. So in summary, we're going to draw a circle in the air. The right hand is going to act as if it's going to touch the incoming technique. Imagine a punch coming towards me. I don't want to block it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach on and get onto it way before it gets to me. And I'm going to take it and kind of draw it in towards me. And while doing so, the other hand is going to come underneath and lift up on the elbow. So while pressing down on one hand, we're going to lift up on the other, and the side effect is we're going to trap the opponent's right arm. Using our imagination, let's take a look a little bit at the hands. So in summary, the hands start parallel. We're going to shift left 
and turn to the right. Now the right hand has to come back to the center line. My waist is going to push towards that direction. So I turn, driving my right hand to the center of the motion. In the meantime, you can see the left hand, the other side of the circle is reaching towards my right hip. The palm is up. So it's a little like taking a steering wheel and making a left hand turn. The reason why I like to use that analogy is we want to kind of keep our hands relatively opposite on the circle. We really don't want the right hand and the left hand to separate. So we want to drive from the waist and connect both sides of the circle. We also want to make sure that we keep our armpits open. Very common when bringing that left hand towards you to close this gap. And now that disconnects. So remember this sensation. We want to try to keep the armpits open and connected into our arms. And the way that we do that is through a gentle extending. So in summary, as I circle, armpits open. I feel the spine, I feel the waist, almost like giving a hug. Nobody hugs like this, right? We reach out and open the body. So as we draw those circles, keep the elbows away from you, and that'll keep your armpits open. So as we arrive at this position, before you get there, you begin shifting flat, turning left. Here, turning right, reach with a right, scoop with a left. The feet go forward, plant your feet. Now you can operate the warding energy. Okay? Now, as I mentioned earlier, when you're applying the warding force, it's very important that you press down. We always want to look outside and we want to see what's going on out here, but the reality is it's actually more important that you give your attention internally initially because there really is nobody in front of you. There's nothing to feel as far as the opponent's arm and all that, so that's part of our imagination. But we can definitely feel the energy of the motion, and that's employed by pushing down, which creates an equal and opposite up. Let's combine the whole thing together. So from here, a springy base, a deep breath, rotate the palms, press. Settle the body back down into your root. As your hands start to approach your waist, shift left, turn and drive your body right, then circle left hand towards you, circling slightly towards the center, heel, ball, toe, ward off left. In ward off left, the spine is straight, the shoulders are open to the right, matching the direction of the right foot. If I had turned my left foot parallel, it looked like my whole body was facing that way. So I'm on the right side of my opponent. My shoulders, elbows, wrists, and fingers are settled downward. The energy point, the part that I'm actually applying force to, is the center of the forearm, as well as the right palm. My right palm sort of matches my right foot, kind of parallel, and body straight up and down. Right? So no leaning. Gives the illusion of leaning. We're basically standing up. All right, let's look at it again. Begin with the opening. A deep breath to draw your attention downward. Press on the floor. Ward off left. Now let's take a look at it from 90 degrees so you can see the footwork and the position of the hands. So from the opening position, looking at it 90 degrees, we push on the floor. As the hands start to approach the bottom, we shift left, turn the center, sit completely on your right foot while turning back towards the center, scooping the arms, keep the feet apart, Settle your weight, stay low, push on the floor, and straighten the spine. Eyes look in the direction of the left foot. Imagine you're to the right of the perceived opponent. When finishing these postures to feel that connectivity, we recommend extend. Lengthen the body, push energy in all directions. Head up, chest relaxed, feet firm, hands full of energy and brighten your gaze. Ward off left. Again. Head up. 
helps to brighten your gaze, right? You can definitely feel your energy more when you raise your spirit. So I want to encourage you, set up a mirror, even set up a camera. Set something up so you can reflect on yourself. Now, when you think about reflecting on and observing yourself doing these things, I highly recommend that you don't exactly watch yourself doing them. So try to perform the movement several times in front of your cell phone camera, uh, and as a result, you'll be able to view and look to see how am I placing my feet, how am I holding my body, and you'll self-correct. Okay? It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have certain guidelines that you're using to take you through the process, right? So it really does help to reflect on yourself a little bit and see how well you're doing as you build this skill. So again, ward off left. So for those of you that are new to us and are following along with this process, what we're going to continue to try to do is to build on this experience. We're going to try to assemble the whole long form. When you think about the different forms there are of Tai Chi, there are different sequences that people learn. And some sequences are relatively short. The 24 form, the 16 form, and there are many great examples of Tai Chi. Now, the idea, though, behind the process of using Tai Chi is that you exercise for approximately 30 minutes with the form. And that's why the long form lasts that long. Its purpose is not convenience, its purpose is training, helping you to manage the ingredients of your body and the, the nature of the skill that you're working on. And as a result, you'll get a lot more benefit out of this. This is one of the healthiest ways to exercise in the world. And being able to direct yourself and managing yourself, well, you have a wonderful mechanism for working with stress, right? And dealing with your body. So let's take a look at it one more time, and then we'll wrap it up. From here, preparation form, springy base, deep breath. Bring up your resources, smile and brighten your gaze. Open. Ward off left. Big circles. Flatten the feet, stay low. Straighten the body. Wonderful. I highly recommend you do that as many times as you can. Every single time you do it, you will improve it. It's a little like sculpting yourself from the inside out, a most profound way of enjoying yourself. All right, now, there are links in the description with resources that you can take advantage of. We're doing things on Facebook, and there'll be a link there to um, the 10 essentials and other useful, um, I want to say, support there. So click on those links. Also, I would like to encourage you, if you're going to try to continue this process and you want to build on the experience, then I highly recommend that you subscribe and that you turn on the notifications so that you get the videos in order and you don't have to bounce back and forth and figure out what comes next. So I highly recommend you, you stay in that loop, so to speak, okay? Also, we value your comments. We value your support as far as giving us um, recommendations and things like that. And we obviously hope that you share this kind of thing. If you're enjoying yourself and you think that others can benefit from this, then I would encourage you to share it with family and friends. Well, Monday's class will focus a little on grasp the bird's tail, which is the essence of Tai Chi, a great way of looking at how we manage change and work with our bodies. So I think you'll enjoy that very, very much. In the meantime, practice over the weekend, get some reading done, and enjoy yourself outdoors. Robert here again from the Red Dragon School of Martial Arts. A pleasure, a pleasure spending time with you today. Enjoy yourself, be safe, and we look forward to spending time with you on Monday. Be blessed.